This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. If you're a seeker, don't miss the inspiring book, Shamanic Awakening, Between the Dark and the Daylight. This remarkable work chronicles shamanic counselor and indigenously trained dream decoder Sandra Cochran's 35 years of experience with diverse wisdom keepers throughout the Americas. Sandy's initiations across the British Isles, Turkey, Greece, and Egypt, combined with her knowledge of symbology, psychology, and myth, influence her dream blog and workshops. Sandy offers private readings, sacred international journeys, a meditative CD, and her book, Shamanic Awakening, to encourage you as you navigate your earth walk and create a deeper connection to yourself. Find this and more at her website, starwalkervisions.com. A vast universe exists within and beyond our reality. What we realize with our five senses is but a tiny fraction of all that is real. Welcome to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm Joe Egent, your guide and advocate as we remove the blinders of our everyday lives and experience together all that exists out there in the world beyond our world. Welcome, folks, to the show. We've got an uh, amazing guest today. We're going to be talking with uh, Dave Whitley, who lives in Nashville, Tennessee. Dave is uh, the author of two books, Superhuman You and Taming the Bent Press. Dave is a, uh, he is a personal trainer and a motivational speaker. He is a real-life superhuman who bends steel bars, spikes, and wrenches. He breaks chains. He drives nails through boards with a single blow of his hand. His journey to superhuman uh, began as a chubby kid with a stutter who was frequently picked on by other kids and would become physically ill when he had to speak in front of a class. He became fascinated with the idea of superhuman strength after reading comic books and seeing the Incredible Hulk on television. Dave has performed all over the U.S., as well as internationally in Italy, the United Kingdom, the Czech Republic, Australia, and Korea. He was featured in the German documentary Kraftakt, a film about strength and is the author of several books, including Superhuman You, How to Break the Chains of Limitation and Unleash Your Own Superpower. In 2008, he began a serious study of the art of the old-time strongman. And as a student of the Grandmaster Strongman Dennis Rogers, he is now the Vice President of Dennis's Old Time Strongman University. In 2012, he was introduced to the training methods of Wim Hof, the Iceman. And in 2016, he became an official Wim Hof Method instructor. Dave's mission is to help people all over the world discover and develop their unique superpower and tap into their true strength and potential. The feats he performs are used as an illustration of the mindset needed to accomplish the impossible. His purpose is to inspire the audience to leave their limitations behind and become the greatest possible version of themselves. And what's fascinating is I met Dave a few years ago in Nashville while attending a 
seminar for uh, martial arts. And we were there at a seminar hosted by uh, the grandmaster of our organization, Professor George Dillman. And I, I noticed this guy across the room who wasn't one of the regulars. And uh, he was wearing uh, either a Dennis Rogers t-shirt or a shirt for the, uh, the Mighty Adam. And I approached him and began talking to him for a while and really got to know this guy. And at the end of the day, he uh, presented Grandmaster Dillman with a unique and special gift, a, uh -huh. a standard metal horseshoe. And while we're all looking around trying to figure out what that meant, this guy with his bare hands and nothing else straightened this thing and handed it to Dillman. Now, I've known George Dillman for 20 years, and I rarely see him shocked, but he was really taken aback by that. And I think we all were watching this guy just, you know, wrestle a uh, horseshoe with his bare hands. But since that time, he has been doing things on Facebook, uh, including breaking coconuts with his bare hands and choosing which coconut out of a stack of two he wants to break at will. When I found out that he had been studying the Wim Hof method, I became particularly interested in having him on the show because I have also been practicing Wim Hof on, uh, in my own practice, and I have found it to be very worthwhile. So we only have a few seconds before we go to break, but I do want to introduce Dave Whitley. How are you doing this morning? Doing fantastic. How are you doing this morning? Oh, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really excited <clears throat> about this because not too many people know anything about Wim Hof. And I'm hoping that when we come back from our break in just a few minutes that uh, we can teach people about how that can be used to uh, conquer yourself each and every day and uh, achieve long-lasting health and longevity. And I really want to learn more about what you're doing with uh, strongman feats and teaching people to break through their limitations. So we're going to be going to break here in uh, just another minute or so. And uh, we'll be right back in just a few minutes. We'll be talking to Dave Whitley, a strongman, motivational speaker, and personal trainer. And you are listening to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Weijin. Broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN TV. For more information on the X Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. How would you like to be able to read other people's minds? Well, the next best thing is here. When you know how to read a person's name, you know how the person thinks, feels, and behaves. Each letter in our name holds a key to unlock our true essence. Our name contains both our gifts and challenges in this lifetime. Nemology Science discovers personality secrets hidden in the placement of the letters of our names, including the first and last impression people remember about us. Sharon shows us how to interpret the arrangement of letters as outlined in her book, Know the Name, Know the Person. Sharon Lynn Wyeth created Nemology Science after 18 years of research and testing her theories and has supported thousands of people around the world in understanding themselves and others better. You'll enjoy Sharon's unique teachings as she shares her system to learn the gifts behind your given birth name. Even if you don't like your birth name, there are jewels in this book. If you're thinking of changing your name, ready to name your child, or wanting to get along better with others, this is the book for you. 
If you'd like to improve your relationships and change your life for the better, get the book today, Know the Name, Know the Person, or visit www.knowthename.com. That's www.knowthename.com. Take a step back in time and discover old Florida cuisine at Marsh Landing Restaurant in Felsmere, Florida. Enjoy delicacies such as frog legs, gator tail, catfish, and swamp cabbage, or enjoy the more traditional cuisine such as hand-cut Angus steaks, ribs, and seafood. Join us for breakfast with a southern flair featuring sweet potato pancakes, biscuits and gravy, and much more. Planning a party? Marsh Landing's private dining rooms can accommodate groups from 8 to 80 people. While you visit, enjoy the historic pictures, artifacts, and stories that line the walls. Marsh Landing is truly a unique experience. Marsh Landing Restaurant, 44 North Broadway in historic downtown Felsmere. Or visit marshlandingrestaurant.com. Marsh Landing, Old Florida cuisine at its best. Welcome back, folks. You're listening to the World Beyond radio show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent. Our special guest today is Dave Whitley. He is a strong man and motivational speaker, a personal trainer, and an instructor in the Wim Hof Method. And he is a resident of Nashville, Tennessee, and we are lucky to have him with us this morning. David, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? So how does one start getting into strongman what motivated you to get into that particular aspect well i had been lifting weights and been fascinated by strength and all all things superhuman since i was a child and um, i actually wound up um, owning a gym and becoming a, a strength coach and teaching workshops related to kettlebells and other things like that and i met a guy named dennis rogers and he i saw him bend a wrench and that was the most amazing thing to me to see him do that. And I actually interviewed him for some stuff that I did on um, a website of mine years ago. He sent me a bunch of DVDs of him doing various different things and um, told me that if I ever wanted to learn how to do any of that stuff, just let him know. And so I took him up on his offer and um, started learning all these amazing things about um, how the mind works and how we can express all of that stuff through the body. Um, because it, in the beginning, it, it seemed like it was about, you know, just bending steel. But really, um, if you trace that lineage of Dennis Rogers back, he had a mentor named Slim the Hammer Man. And Slim's mentor was a guy named the Mighty Adam, which um, you were talking earlier about the, the uh, seminar with uh, George Dillman. In the Mighty Adam's biography, um, there's a reference to uh, Dillman having met the Mighty Adam. Um, back mm -hmm. in the in the mid 70s. And so that was the reason that I brought the horseshoe to that seminar is because um, knowing him being a martial artist and understanding lineages the way martial artists do, I can trace my lineage back to the mighty Adam. So he met the mighty Adam, who was, you know, like my great grandfather, so to speak, in that in that lineage. So I wanted to uh, to be able to to kind of bring that circle to its completion. But it started as a kid with a fascination with strength, and um, I've just pursued it ever since. And I've come to realize that it is far more about what goes on mentally because um, one of the first things that Dennis taught me when I was training with him is you have to remove all doubt and limitation from your mind because the mind controls the body. And then um, I found, uh, found Wim Hof a few years ago, and he was saying the same sort of thing but expressed in a different way with the – feats of extreme endurance and cold and, and that sort of stuff. So it was just very natural for me to latch onto that. You know, I, I was a powerlifter when I met you, uh, mm -hmm. several years ago and, uh, had a few state records of my own and was mm -hmm. doing all kinds of strong stuff. And I, I knew there were people out there that were stronger and tougher. I mean, you know, when you're in one weight class and you see guys that are, you know, benching a thousand pounds in another weight class, you know, you, mm -hmm. you, you get humbled, humbled by that a little bit, but I had also been, uh, uh, curling up frying pans and tearing decks of cards in half and, and, uh, bent a couple of nails. But when I saw you tear the, uh, the, uh, or bend the uh, horseshoe for Dillman, I thought that was, uh, that was pretty awesome. And well, thank you. It, it, 
what's really amazing uh, for, for the listeners out there is that this is not a, uh, a lengthy process. I mean, for those of us who were standing there watching, it took maybe a second and a half from the time he held it up as a U and from the time he handed it over as an S, it was maybe, maybe three seconds total. And one thing that I did learn about uh, doing those kinds of things for myself is it's more about uh, not so much about hand strength or arm strength. It's about mind strength. It's about saying, okay, I'm willing to endure this much pain to get the job done. And I'm willing to conquer what's in my hands by conquering myself first. Absolutely. I, um, I, I really think about it in terms of I'm, I'm, I'm drawing on everything that is me and is connected to me. And I'm directing that. I, I actually visualize directing all of my self, all of my energy, all of everything that is me between the molecules in the center of the piece of whatever I'm trying to bend and spreading them apart. Um, which is just imagery that I use. I mean, obviously it takes some practice and it takes some, some um, physical training and all that, but the mental element, element of it is far more important. Um, I, I actually came to that seminar with a friend of mine who teaches the style of Kung Fu that I practiced for many years, which was my introduction to, to Qigong and, and all things esoteric. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, in, in the intro that you did for me, I didn't really talk. You, you, and when I sent it to you, um, I didn't send you much in regards to that, but I've been practicing Qigong and, and various things like that since the mid nineties. So there's definitely, um, um, a commonality to all of those things. To me, it's just the, the spirit expressing itself willfully in different arenas. So to me, it's all kind of the same thing. Exactly. And it, you know, it fascinates me that you actually think about it in, uh, measures of the quantum realm actually going into the molecules and mm -hmm. doing something to the molecular structure of that which you're trying to destroy or bend mm -hmm. or, or change by using the mind to change matter. And those are the same kinds of things that, that I teach when I'm uh, teaching uh, Reiki healing or mm -hmm. practicing Qigong. And, you know, mm -hmm. I've also done the Qigong and the kettlebells and all those things. Heck, you and I could be long lost brothers. You know, that we've, mm -hmm. we've traveled almost the same path. So it, it's it's amazing that you not only um, do these things, but it's the approach that you take when you're doing these things. And I think that's important for uh, our listeners is to understand that you're going at it from a quantum energy matter, uh, level by using your mind to conquer matter. Absolutely. And I actually don't think of it in terms of conquest or conquering anything. I, I don't think of anything really as being competitive um, or even as destruction. Um, which you could very easily think of this guy's mangling up steel or tearing cards or whatever. Um, I'm not destroying anything. For me, it's a part of the creative process um, because creation and destruction are sort of opposite sides of the same thing. You can, you can create something new by destroying something old, and nothing new is created without something old passing th away. So I tend to look at it from that point of view. Everything is creative everything is constructive instead of, of destructive for me. So I'm not des destroying a horseshoe. I'm creating a, 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 an interesting looking piece of metal from um, a piece of metal that was previously shaped in a different way. I'm not creating, or I'm not destroying a deck of cards. I'm creating two half decks. And in the process of doing that, um, I'm creating and learning things about who I am on a, a mental and spiritual and psychic level. So for me, it's all about that process of creation. I don't think in terms of destruction or conquest or anything. It's just how can I be better is really what it all comes down to. That's the phrase is what can I do to be better today? What improvement can I make today? That is really cool. A lot of people forget that process that in order to make something, something else has to not be anymore or has, right. has to be changed fundamentally in order for something new to be brought from it. Well, and that's the that's the one fundamental universal law, right, is that energy can't be created or destroyed and it's always moving through form. Everything's made of energy and it's always changing form. Nothing is still. I mean, even if you if you look at something that's dead, like a, a dead flower or a, um, a dead animal, 
um, on a molecular level, there's still motion going on there as it decomposes and returns to just a pure energetic source to be recycled into something else. That is, that's so true. So how do you take this and teach it in, in your particular business uh, as a personal trainer and a motivational speaker? How do you bring these concepts to life for them? The first thing that I do when I'm working with another person is start finding out where they are in their own mental process and in their own physical process as well. If, um, because if I don't know where you are, then I, I don't know where our starting point is. And very often people who seek out help at, from a coach know sort of where they want to go and more importantly, know who they want to be when they get there, but they don't really understand where they are, or what it's going to take them to get where they want to go. So if, if we're in, if, if you and I decide we're going to take a trip to California, um, first of all, we have to determine where we're going to go in California. I mean, we could go to LA or we could go to San Diego and that's two completely different trips, right? But we also have to determine where we're starting from. Because if I'm in Nashville and you're in, say, Brazil, that's two completely different trips. So we have to take into account as much of the process as possible on the front end. And, you know, you start where you are and then the first step is the first step. And, you know, the old sort of trite expression of the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. The part that gets left out of there is the journey of a thousand miles is made up of thousands upon thousands of single steps. You don't take the first step and then you're there. It's you take this step and then the next step and then the next step. And um, I think that it's very easy for people to overestimate what they're capable of doing in a month or three months and underestimate what they're capable of doing in two years or five years. Um, and consistency is the key to all that stuff. And we, we see that in strength training. We see that in you know martial arts and breaking and that sort of stuff. There is no overnight success. It's it's always a step by step process, and some people may take steps faster or take bigger steps than others, or just have a more natural inherent ability at any given thing. But figuring out where you are and where you want to go are the two most important things because after that, the rest is easy. It's just figuring out where the landmarks are. That is incredible. You know that that sounds an awful lot like a more Eastern philosophy than a western microwave i want it now 500 channel philosophy yeah yeah absolutely and ultimately the the purpose of achieving any goal is not the achievement of the goal it's the the process of growth and development of the person that they go through while on the path to achieve that goal so to take it back to the wim hof method you know i, I if we if we just go and jump in you know break the ice on a frozen lake and jump in there for five minutes and get out. Um, the things that you learn along the way of being able to build up to that are far more valuable than the experience of just getting in the ice itself at the end. Plus, if you do that with no training, um, you've bitten off more than you can chew and you'll have a pretty miserable few days after that. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because I say that because I managed to, uh, to, um, do that when I first started training Wim Hof method about three years ago, I felt really good. And I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of see where I can go with this. And I spent more time in the, the f cold lake. It wasn't frozen, but the water temperature is about 35 degrees. I spent, and it felt really good while I was in there. I spent about three minutes or so. There's a video on it, of, on uh, YouTube of it. And then when I got out about six or seven minutes later, I started having all these after effects of shivering and, and feeling bad and, and, uh, fear that goes along with it. And, um, realized that I had trained for it, but I had not trained for that particular level of intensity. It's like deadlifting. You don't just walk up to the bar and deadlift 600 pounds after you've been training for three weeks. <laughs> no, you can only try that once. <laughs> yes. Well, we're going to be right back in just a few minutes. And Rob, we really want to get into the uh, Wim Hof method and uh, how somebody gets started on that and what it, what they can actually derive from that. So you are listening to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent, 
And in this hour, we're talking with David Whitley and the Wim Hof Method and Conquering Yourself. We'll be right back in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. While science pursues fact, magic accesses the quantum level, bridging random facts to form truth. As long as science and magic remain separate and polarized, the truth cannot be known. I'm Gwilda Wiecka. Join me on the Science of Magic radio program, dedicated to unification and evolution of consciousness. During each episode, I'll be speaking with experienced and respected scientists and mystics. From astrologers to astronomers, from medical doctors to shaman, the scientific method to dowsing and intuition, we'll weave together information from seemingly divergent practices to promote unity and enlightenment. Join me, Gwilda Wiyaka, and the Science of Magic right here on the Mutual Broadcast Network. For more information, visit www.thescienceofmagic.net. Gibbs A. Williams, Ph.D., is a practicing psychoanalyst, supervisor, researcher, and author in New York City. Much of his life has been dedicated to understanding nature and the uses of meaningful coincidences or synchronicities. His radical and original non-Jungian, non-mystical, non-magical theory of synchronicities illuminates much of the fog surrounding this challenging and perplexing topic. His ideas and manners are fresh, presented in a style that is both entertaining and highly informative. He is also an expert on crisis intervention, specially focused on violence reduction for the police and citizens, mastering anxiety, frustration, and stress without the use of medication, and effectively preventing and treating heroin addiction. Dr. Williams can be contacted at his email address at gwwilliamsny11 at aol.com or visit his website at... Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. True healing must address four levels, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual, for us to live joyful and productive lives. We tend to treat three of the four, leaving the spiritual languishing. If you're tired of the same dysfunctional patterns cropping up in your life, soul balancing is for you. Trixie Phelps, owner and founder of Soul Balancing, is a naturally gifted energy healer trained in numerous esoteric forms, including shamanism. Trixie has created a powerful modality that safely and effectively clears your energetic field. A soul balancing session can remove interference, heal trauma, and restore your hope. Contact Trixie for a life-changing long-distance session today, www.soulbalancing.world.
Welcome back to the world beyond. I'm your host, Joe Weegent. This hour, we're talking with David Whitley, and we're about to get into a discussion on the Wim Hof method. Now, I guess it was almost a year ago when I saw this uh, show on the Vice Network on uh, Dish Network, and they were talking about this Wim Hof method and not knowing what that was. I didn't realize that it was a guy's name and uh, started looking into uh, his show and what he was doing there. It was a documentary on his life and his technique and some of the things he's doing for other people. And started incorporating a little bit of that into my my life, but uh, you know didn't really. Uh, I guess I don't go about it the right way. I never really take anything on the right way, but uh, hopefully, our guests can clear that up for us all. So, David, tell me a little bit about Wim Hof and uh, how how did he come up with this method of his, and what is it exactly? Well, um, to to go back a little bit before that, I had been. Um, intermittently, off and on for several years, doing cold water dousing during the winter months. And I'm in Tennessee, so it never gets really cold, like really cold, like it does up in North Dakota and stuff. So um, during the winter months, I would leave a bucket of water sitting outside and then go outside. And if it had ice on it, I'd crack the ice and I would dump it over my head and stand out there and do some some deep breathing or some Qigong or whatever, and then go on about my day. And I thought that was a lot of fun. And it was it was beneficial and it was invigorating. And then, um, in the, uh, um, winter of, I guess it was 2013. Um, my mom was on her last decline after dealing with lung cancer for several months and she passed away um, shortly after Thanksgiving. So we were at my, my wife's, um, family's house for Christmas, my first Christmas without my mom. And I was kind of, you know, feeling all the emotions that go along with that. And I was up late flipping channels and there was a, another documentary. I wasn't the vice one because the vice one hadn't been recorded yet. It was an older one, um, like maybe Stanley superhumans or some show similar to that. And Wim Hof was on there and he was, um, swimming underneath about a, a meter thick ice layer in a lake that they had cut holes in and he had divers and camera crew down there and he swam I don't know how far it was 80 or 100 meters he swam under this ice that if he messed up he was dead and I looked at that and I thought well that really puts my bucket of water that I'm dumping over my head into a different perspective because I had it, it was so far-fetched to me that that I had never even considered that there was a possibility like that and I, I tend to think of, of of the possibilities within the impossible quite a bit, but I had never considered anything like that with the cold. So um, the world we live in being what it is, before the end of that show, I had gone on Amazon and ordered uh, the book, Becoming the Iceman, that he had co-written with another guy. And by the time um, we got home, I had gone to, found his website and gone on there and signed up for the 10-week online training course that walks you step-by-step -step through um, everything to do with the Wim Hof method. And that culminated, that 10 weeks culminated with the, uh, the trip to the lake that I was referencing earlier before we went to the break. Um, so it starts with breathing and it ends with breathing. Everything is about the breath because, you know, I ask people this a lot of times in workshops and, and things like that. What's the most important thing you're going to do today? And they'll give you a whole litany of answers, but there's only one right answer. And that answer is breathe. Because if you're not breathing, um, nothing else is going to be successfully completed. And if you don't believe me, take about, you don't even have to take a whole day. Just skip it for about three or four hours and, and you know, see how that goes. Because <laughs> it obviously won't play out well. Um, one of the things that Wim stresses that I loved so much is that it, it, it mirrored the, the philosophy that I already was practicing in my strength training is that you you cannot force the body to do anything. Um, adaptation, we, we hear things, particularly in the strength world, about how I'm gonna go do this stuff and force my body to adapt because I'm subjecting it to all this stress. And then you'll also hear that well, the program I was doing was working well, but then I stopped adapting. And so I, what, what, when someone says that, what they mean is that they stopped progressing in the direction that they wanted to go. Well, in actuality, what's going on is you cannot force your body to adapt. It's always adapting to something. Um, my friend Adam Glass says adaptation has no off switch. 
So if you're lifting and, and eating healthy foods and you're getting stronger and losing body fat and all that, you're adapting. If you stop lifting and you start eating you know, chili cheese fries all the time, you'll adapt in the other direction. It's not that you stopped adapting, it's that you adapted to whatever stimulus the environment provides. Um, when you do a program like that and you, and you stop progressing, it's not that you stopped adapting, you adapt by getting stronger to this stress for a certain period of time. But if the stress is too great, the body's mechanism, when it senses the danger, if it can't become stronger, it will start to shut down in various ways related to that stress so that you can't do the activity that's putting you in danger anymore. So that's the reason that, that we see people that they make great gains in lifts, for example, and then all of a sudden they hit a wall and they start going backwards. It's not that they stopped adapting. It's that they're adapting beautifully to the stress. It's that the stress is too high. They're looking in the wrong place. They're looking outside like it's the, the or, or they, they should be looking inside at the reaction to the stress rather than looking outside as if the stress itself is what matters because it's not. It's all about the adaptation to the stress and, and it, it doesn't shut off and you can't force it. It's like if we went outside and I said, okay, let's go get a suntan. If I spend 20 minutes outside in the sun today in February, I probably won't get much of a suntan. But if I spend the same 20 minutes in the sun um, in, in near the, the equator in Africa somewhere in the desert, I'll get you know severe sunburn from it because the, the intensity level of the stress is different. So either way, I'm going to react and then adapt to it. But the level of the stress is what determines how well I adapt and how long I can continue to adapt. So with the Wim Hof method, we start out with the breathing exercises. And um, it's very simple. And I've had quite a few people contact me say that they've heard Wim on a podcast. I heard some of the other instructors on a, um, just talking about it. You do about 30 or 40 really deep breaths, fully in, and then you just relax. You don't blow all the air out. You just relax and let the air out so that the pressure outside the lungs and the pressure inside the lungs equalizes. And I call that a full breath. And Wim's um, continuous mantra on that is fully in, let go. Fully in, let go. After about 30 or 40 of those, you will exhale the same way. And then after that exhale, you'll just close off your airway and hold your breath. After an exhale, um, we call that a retention. And in the initial stages, um, when I'm working with new people, I was uh, not teaching them anything. I'll say, okay, just hold your breath as long as you can by whatever means you would just naturally do it. And they'll hold it for as long as they can. And then we'll go through a few cycles of breathing exercises and I'll have them um, exhale and hold their breath. And Almost without exception, people will hold their breath longer after an exhale, having done the breathing exercises, than they could after a full inhale, like they were going to dive to the bottom of the pool, um, before doing the breathing exercises. So that captivated my attention very quickly. Um, physiologically, what's going on there is the, the change in the relationship or the ratio between the oxygen and carbon dioxide in the blood makes the body more alkaline. And I'm not a science guy, but this is how it was explained to me um, in the instructor training. And also, uh, that higher level of oxygenation in the blood will cause the capillaries um, in the extremities to vasodilate. So the, the smallest blood vessels will open up more and improve circulation. And so if we can train those tiny blood vessels to open and close based on our our behavior and our breathing and our mind, then what we're doing is taking a tremendous amount of this of the load off of the heart muscle and spreading that load throughout the entire um, circulatory system, which then comes in handy when we get in the cold because you get in the cold, the first thing that happens is the extremities, um, the capillaries and blood vessels there contract to keep the the core warm because that's survival. But after a little while, the body realizes that the extremities are in danger. So those capillaries actually open back up and you pump more blood into them. And that's why if you put your hand in cold water for say a minute, minute and a half, 
your hand will turn white. But if you leave it in there for an extended period of time, several minutes, it'll start to turn red. It's, it has to do with those blood vessels opening and closing as an adaptive response to the stimulus of the cold. So I would start people with the breathing exercises. And then um, for the cold exposure, we would start with at the end of your normal shower, turn the water on as cold as you can stand it and stand under that cold water for 15 to 30 seconds. And that's all the cold you're going to get for today. Because if I tell you, you know, spend three to five minutes in, in ice water, I tell you that Wim's swimming underneath the ice for 80 meters or whatever, um, or running a marathon barefoot uh, north of the Arctic Circle in the snow, um, that's all seems really far-fetched and really impossible to achieve. But if I say, hey, can you stand under the coldest water that comes out of your faucet for 30 seconds, that seems more manageable. And so that's that first step on the journey of a thousand miles. And philosophically, the way Wim approaches it that, that matches up with, with what I do in all the training that I do is I never, ever want to go to the limit. I am absolutely unconcerned with what my limit is in anything as far as the specifics of where it is. What I do want to do is raise it. And the way to raise it is to stay within a zone that is well within your limits and quite comfortable. And eventually things that were a little bit difficult become very easy and things that were very difficult become possible. And if you continue to do those things in that way, that comfort zone of limits expands and eventually your comfort zone will expand to engulf your old limitations, to put it the way my friend Paul McElroy puts it. So um, I like to think of it as if you always bump up against the limit, you're going to find it and something's going to break. But if you never go against your limit, you are literally practicing having no limit. You just blew me away with that last piece, man. Seriously, that uh, the object of not ever uh, reaching the finish line of your of your mental potential, mm -hmm. but constantly expanding what you think is your limit by always playing within, uh, you know, 80% of your maximum that that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And if anyone says that they, they pushed past their limit and they didn't get damaged in some way, then they didn't really push past the limit. They moved the, the line of understanding of what their limit is. Because a limit by definition means that something is going to break if you go past it. If you push past your limit, say in the barbell deadlift, either the bar won't come off the floor or something in you is going to snap, like a disc or a vertebrae or a ligament or something, right? If you push past your limit in cold exposure, like I did uh, three years ago in the lake, um, you have all this shivering and, and all of this uh, like feeling really bad that happens after the fact. Um, so I, I admittedly went past my limit on that one, but I know much more now about how to stay within that. And if I had to do it over again, I would have gotten out after about a minute. Well, I want to talk a whole lot more about limits whenever we come back for our last segment. Indeed. Stay tuned, folks. You are listening to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with David Whitley. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. 
No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. I am Dr. Carl O'Helvey, founder, president of a new cancer foundation focusing on evidence-based physical, mental, and spiritual interventions, including natural cancer cures, prayer, meditation, affirmations, nutrition, and other related holistic cancer prevention and cure modalities. These are used in cancer education, research, and financing care. I ask for your help to continue this important work by donating at www.holisticcancerfoundation.com. Wouldn't you love to know the secret to everything? I'm Dr. Kimberly McGeorge, and on The Secret to Everything, we will merge the practical with open investigation into all realms of the mysterious. We will talk to cutting-edge alternative health practitioners, those who inspire and motivate you in business and life, and of course, we will share stories of the paranormal, conspiracy, and cryptozoology. You will transform because of the frequency I carry, the frequencies my guests carry. Life may never be the same after you listen to this program. For the secret to everything is for you, the listener, for those who desire more in every area of their lives and believe that it can still be found. Listen and discover the secret to everything.com. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. You're listening to the X Zone Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. Welcome back to the World Beyond Radio Show. I'm your host, Joe Wegent, and we're talking with David Whitley. And David Whitley can be reached on his website, irontamer.com. He can also be reached by email at irontamerdave at hotmail.com. He has written two books, Superhuman You and Taming the Bent Press. The World Beyond is brought to you, produced, and distributed by the ever-growing leader in New Age, Paranormal, Alternative Health, and Supernatural Programming, the X-Zone Broadcast Network, and Relmar McConnell Media Company, at their headquarters and master control in Ontario, Canada. To learn more about the X-Zone Broadcasting Network, the world beyond, or to see other exciting hosts and shows, please go to www.xzbn.net. To contact me about the show or any other information, you can email me at Joe Wegent. That's Joe, W-E-I-G-A-N-T, at xzbn.net. Or you can visit my websites, paranormalpeace.com 
and Reiki Choice. That's R E I K I Choice.com. Dave, we were talking about the uh, the breathing method, and mm-hmm. what's interesting is uh, what we know from cancer is that cancer cannot survive in a alkaline environment, and mm-hmm. it can also not survive in a uh, hyperoxygenated environment. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people today are eating a lot of very very acidic foods. Mm-hmm. And they are taking in a lot of uh, sugary soda pop. And cancer, of course, feeds on sugars. Mm -hmm. And sugar or uh, soda pops also contain a lot of carbon dioxide. That is the the part that gives it the bubbles and the fizz is the CO2. Mm -hmm. So if we are incorporating these breathing methods into our daily lives and practicing this and hyperoxygenating the body, we are indeed becoming a cancer fighting machine as long as we of course you know cut back on those things which are creating the environment in, in the first place mm-hmm. well to that point if i can and, and again i'm not a scientist i'm not a doctor so understand all that but what i can offer on that subject is my own experience and um, i lost my mother to lung cancer a few years ago um, and she did everything that you're supposed to do in air quotes Um, to treat the cancer and um, suffered more from the treatment than she did from the cancer as I look back on it. My father, um, almost two years ago, was diagnosed with stage three lung cancer, did one dose of chemo, one round of radiation, threw up blood and said, this is not for me, because he's 79 years old at the time. He said, this is not for me. And if I'm going to have just a few, a short time left in this life, I want to enjoy it now and not go through what my mother went through. So he opted out of all that stuff and became a, um, it, it, a, a very intelligent man, widowed with no real responsibilities anymore after having taken care of my mother through all of that, um, and a high-speed internet connection and a life-and-death situation. He became a research machine on the very stuff that you're talking about. And, you know, you hear about the unicorns of the people who were uh, knocking on death's door and then they changed these few little things and then now they're they're okay and they're doing well and they're thriving, you know, years after they were pronounced with the death sentence. And but you never or you very rarely actually run across those people. Turns out my dad became one of those people. He is the unicorn in that situation because He took it upon himself to alter his diet, to use some um, herbal uh, medicinal applications that he picked up from people online and from uh, from seeking out those people who had done that very thing. And I also showed him the breathing stuff and the the cold stuff. He's not sold on the cold. He doesn't uh, doesn't want to get in the cold, but he does practice breathing exercises and the um, the follow up scans are undeniable and of course it could be coincidence and um but i don't think it is we know it's not (laughs) yeah we know it's not he um he he switched to a ketogenic diet so he Uh doesn't eat sugar at all based on the idea that sugar needs that to or that uh cancer needs sugar in order to grow but the 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 short version of the story is in his subsequent scans this this mass that was inoperable in his lungs hasn't changed and he's 81 now and for me to say that it hasn't changed sounds like nothing happened but nothing happening when you have cancer is a fantastic thing because there's this tumor that's sitting there that's cancerous that isn't killing you anymore it isn't growing it isn't taking over it just sits there and he has said that he would love to get rid of it but at the same time it doesn't bother him so as long as it's not growing he's fine with it Uh, the other important point of what he does is before he goes to bed at night he visualizes himself having perfect health in every cell of his body and there's a very important distinction to make there because this is something that he and i talked through about this very important distinction to make there he focuses on having perfect health he does not ever focus on curing cancer or being free of cancer or not having cancer because every time you do that you're thinking about cancer he's thinking of perfect health which negates cancer and anything else that doesn't contribute to perfect health so 
he's definitely put the mental game into it, and um, he is moving well and feeling better now than he has for the past 10 or 15 years, he says. So there's definitely something to that. That's, you know, falls perfectly in line with the law of attraction in that uh, if you want something out of your life, don't concentrate on trying to get that piece out of your life, concentrating on a life where that can't exist in the first place. And if more people would think about being perfectly healthy and living perfectly healthy instead of, gosh, I don't want to get cancer or I want to get rid of this cancer. Or, I, I mm-hmm. don't want fibro or whatever the case is mm-hmm. by changing the mindset. You can change your life and you can change matter. Absolutely. Because all of, all of those things that have to do with mental state, all mental states are like vibrational frequencies and they, they're always there like like visiting a city that city is always there and if we go and we visit a city and then we leave that city the city didn't go away we moved somewhere else so we can use our mind to consciously enter into a vibrational state that is in line with what we want and if it's in line with what we want and in harmony with what we want it automatically negates the stuff that we don't want we don't have to put any effort into getting rid of things all we have to put our effort into is becoming what we want to be. And that, that ties into what I was saying earlier about I don't think of it as conquest or as destruction. I think of it as creating something new. I want to constantly be creating something new. And in that process, I am creating the, the next step of my own physical, mental, and spiritual evolution. You and I need to go into business together because I have been teaching those exact same things for the last oh, five to ten years. Almost exactly the way you're describing it is vibration and frequency and thought process and changing matter with your will. Well, and, and even going into the idea of limits that we were talking about earlier, if if you go around saying the word limit a lot, you're probably hitting it. <laughs> yeah. You know? And, and think about like some of the most amazing feats of strength that you'll ever see is from people who are Cirque du Soleil performers. And they're doing these incredible feats of, of expressing the human body. And they're very strong. And they're you know doing all these acrobatic moves and, and with such precision and control. And if you look at their faces, they're relaxed and happy on their face. Mm-hmm. They're not trying harder. They're not pushing against their limit. They've achieved that level because they have consistently put in the work so that those things that are impossible for someone like myself to do at this moment are commonplace for them. And yes. so it, it, it all, it's all the same thing to me is I guess is, is what I'm, what I'm trying to say with all that. I saw that show live in Vegas mm-hmm. about uh, 15 years ago. And those two Bulgarian brothers, mm-hmm. th- those two strong men who go through a very slow expression of pure strength, using nothing else but their own human bodies. Mm-hmm. You know, as a power lifter at the time, looking at that, I'm going, well, you know, I can I can pull 500 pounds off the ground or, you know, I can climb under 800 pounds and take it for a ride. And I'm watching these two guys do something very <laughs> slow and very calculated and doing something that's just very expressive. And they do it so relaxed and so slowly. I'm, I was completely blown away by that. So, yeah, and I, yeah. Can, I can guarantee that backstage they're not sniffing ammonia and eating chalk and slapping each other before they go on either. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So how does the process of uh, facing a cold shower every morning help us to achieve a better day? Well, something that I learned um, – that had kind of been cycling around in my mind, but I hadn't actually put it into words, but I learned this at the Wim Hof instructor training. Um, we, we, one day we were in Colorado, it was November and we've, okay, we're going up the mountain today. So we, we hike. We're almost out of time. So you're going to have to speed it up just a little bit. Okay. So we hike several thousand feet up this mountain and there's a Creek there. We break through the ice in the Creek and it's only a few inches deep. So the instruction is put your hand in there and leave it there. And through that process, we begin to differentiate between danger, fear, pain, and cold. So you put your hand in that water, you're not in any danger. Um, 
there's a little bit of pain, but you can learn to work around that. Fear goes away when you realize that nothing bad's going to happen, and then you just experience the cold. So there's a certain brutal Folks, honesty. we're going to have to say goodbye for the day. You have been listening to David Whitley and conquering yourself and making yourself better every day and achieving your goals. This is the World Beyond Radio Show, and we have been honored to have you with us. We'll be back again. Have a great day. Yeah.